Okay. We're back on this side of the engine and we'll just take this fuel lift pump out of the way. I use a little core to drive, actually the ratchet, little Sid Chrome ratchet and the ratchet sticking on it. So, so it's only a little half inch socket. Two nuts. Some of them have really thin walled nuts on probably later Perkins more. And a couple of nuts will just pop them in the box. We won't be putting this back on again. There we go. That's it, got the big leg on him. Sounds good if they're making that noise. It's usually a sign of a good pump. And that runs in and runs up on the cam. Now, we'll just grab our little nut down here and rattle, rattle this off. There's a spacer on that bottom one. I'm not sure why. Okay, now I'll just grab these bolts and drop them in our pot and take the side cover off. Looks nice and clean in here, that's what you'd expect to see. And you can see the push rods sitting top of the cam followers here. And the cam followers run on the cam and as we turn the cam over you'll see these go up and down, up and down, and your valve timing adjusts that. Um, you can see, that's probably the best one to have a look at. You can see if I grab a little pointer of some sort. You can see where she goes up and down like that. So to get the cam out, you can actually peg them, get Pinch a peg off your missus, but don't tell her. She'll bloody give you a flogger. And <laughs> but you can lift it and actually peg that with a... Actually, a clothes peg will do the job. And you lift them up as high as you can go and put a clothes peg on them, and that lets you get them out. The front one there is always a problem, but um, you can clear these ones at least. Best bet's to tip the engine over and... Yeah, roll him right over out of the way, I suppose. Now, the oil pump housing is next in here. So, we'll pull it apart separately later. There was a, um, there was a few different modifications to this housing as time went by. Just the bypass change and things like that. I think on the TE20, um, I did a video on the TE20, um, I'll just come around the other side, on the TE20 valve, um, oil filter housing and the valve changes on that, um, we do have bulletins and all that available for this, so we'll just... And there we go. So this here is your pressure relief valve. You can adjust your pressure up here a little bit. Um, adjust your cold pressure there. That won't fix a worn out engine, but you can adjust it. We'll have a look at that a bit later on. Now this would have had a little banjo type fitting, an oil gauge coming up to the dash, but 
someone's blocked that off at some stage. Don't know why. Um, probably don't need to know why. But someone's done it at some stage. I'm just seeing if I could find a little spanner to just loosen him off. And you can see the, the pressure oil comes in through here, goes through the filter then back into here and along the engine block here that's your oil gallery and it'll go up and feed your cam bearings. Um, I think these little nuts here, we'll find out, I think those little nuts there hold the cam bearings in place. I'm not 100% sure yet, I haven't done one of these engines for a long time. Since I've started doing videos I haven't done one and um, but I've done a couple back years ago, but I'm, I'm a bit rusty. This is why this engine's such a good thing for me. Now normally, these banjos are a UNF thread, but it looks like we've had a metric one jammed in here. God, the bolt's 100 mile long. Yeah, not sure about that. That's a different thread to normal. I'll just check this one. That one looks untouched. So this will give us an indication of whether the thread's been um, dicked around with or not. No, so that's a fine one too. So where the TEA and the uh, petrol engines that I've done are, are a 3.8 UNC thread these ones look to be a 7 16th fine and that's the correct thread there so someone's got a bolt and put in there and put a different gauge or no oil gauge or something like that so that's all as it should be these holes you'll find that probably where these are if you look inside, there'll be a drilling that'll go in through to the main bearings and that's how they, they set them up in the factory and when they set them up, they had to have a way of drilling the cross journal so they put a hole straight through then they just blocked him up and they use them for um, you know, oil gauges and anything else because that's your main oil supply. Then there's one that comes up here to the cam and then the cam sends oil up to your cylinder head. So we'll actually trace all that and follow how that goes once we get the block apart. Okay, we might tip that block upside down and we'll pull the cam and all out and go from there. Okay, I've got the engine turned upside down. We're on a 45, I suppose. And you may be able to see, well, I hope you can see, that all the cam followers have fallen away from the cam. So the cam should come out easy when we want it to. But we do need to get the cam off, or the cam drive chain off, your timing chain off. So we'll just undo this nut here. That's quite loose really. Now I'll grab a couple of little bars. And we're pulling the crank gear over the keys, and away you go. Now the key just fell out of the camshaft here, which that's no problem. We can sort that out later. Now I can't see any... There's a dot here on the gear. But we'll have to run through timing this engine again so we'll go oh well when we do ours and you can see shims here on the crank I can't see the monitor there. oh yes you can see that there's shims and that spaces it up so your, your timing train runs true so don't get wear from it running one way there's no timing marks on there that I can see no you must just do it as a 
piston position, which is a good way of doing it. The timing chain, a bit of slop there. Readily available, well worth doing. Okay, the cam. Now you notice we can turn the cam around, around, around. That's what we want. Now, God, I haven't got my right spanner here then. Couldn't organise a bloody chook raffle. Nah, I'll go and get the right spanner. And we're back. <laughs> Didn't take long, just not organised. Okay, so half inch AF here. It just doesn't feel good with my old worn out spanner there. So what will feel good is a nut gun. There's actually end float to account for here once it's all on too, but I didn't check that at the time. The, the gear runs hard against the back there. So you can actually, the, the shoulder on the cam and this housing here um, dictate your end float. If I didn't check that, I probably should have been anyway. Bloody hard to get good help, really. Give myself a bloody good talking to and put myself off. So there you go. There's the front cam support out. Now I was just looking to see if that had a bearing in there at all, or it was metal on metal. A lot of the standard motor company things had metal on metal or sometimes they had a replaceable front bush. Front bush only. And you'll also notice that the holes on that are not straight through the centre. So it'll bolt up that way, but if you have it this way, it won't bolt up. And the idea of that is... If you have a look around here, you see these little oil holes? That's so the oil holes line up. And there's an oil groove around the cam here. So there's two holes, so it looks like, and this is just me supposing, I don't know at this stage, but the oil will come through this gallery into your main bearing. Then from your main bearing, it'll come up in here to your cam, I believe. But look, we'll check all that out. We'll just see if that's right at the time. So this fella here, he should be able to slide out. What a beauty. Hey, everyone wants one of these. So I'll just give him a bit of a wipe up. I might pan out just a bit. And you have oil grooves around here. Now on the back here, oil comes in and gets fed around and gets trapped and then that, each time it just pushes it up. So if you have a rocker not oiling, I know on the petrol engines there's a little flat there. And if that gets carboned up over the years, you may not have oil getting up to your rockers. And it's worked from the little flats on the back of your camshaft. Now, on your cam here, you're looking at the lobes, checking that they're all even. Now there's a little bit of hardening coming off just there. Look, it's not too bad. You can just see a little bit of wear on this one and here. But anyway, I suppose you'd expect wear, wouldn't you? Now, in the housing here, 
We don't have replaceable bushes, but I believe we do up the back. So we're going to have a look at them. Then the other thing we look for at this stage is we slide all our cam followers out. And we look on the bottom there just to make sure they look okay. And then there's no hardening coming off. But then the other thing we look for Come out of here. Good. Is when you clean the two surfaces, brand new ones, you can put them together and you can actually rock them. These ones you can't, but when they're reground or new, there's actually a slight dome there, and where they rub on the camshaft. Um, well, that's another interesting thing, I suppose, is where these run on the cam lobe, they don't actually run right in the middle of the cam lobe. They actually run across to the side a little bit. And the reason they run to the side a little bit is as the cam hits them each time, the cam comes through hitting them, they just turn them a little bit. The next time it comes around, it turns a little bit more and turns a little bit more. So that gives you even wear on your cam followers. So, But look, I would use these again, even though they're not dished or they're not, um, not convex on the bottom surface there, they still look good enough for me to use again if I chose to, so. Okay, we'll get all them out, and then I suppose it'll be a good time to knock a few pistons out.